Hey, what's up? It's Madeline. If you're interested in proving your senses, understanding the science behind aromas is a really fascinating thing to learn how to do. Not only will you become better at, say, blind tasting wines or identifying secret ingredients in food, but you also have sort of a fundamental understanding of the physics of taste. And who better to really have a great knowledge of this particular topic are master sommeliers. They in fact, spend several years training their palate to identify different aromas. Um, a, a few days ago, I interviewed Master Sommelier Matt Stamp about this particular topic, and he had some interesting tips for us for uh, tasting wine. There's so many in wine, but there are only a few which are kind of characterized as impact compounds. Aha, uh -huh. so, okay. So the idea is that an impact compound is an aromatic compound which you get in like only one or maybe a small select handful of varieties. Okay, so they're sort of like um, giveaways. Exactly, exactly. Tell totally. their tells. Right, yeah, so, okay. so pyrazine is certainly absolutely one, right? Like okay. The whole Bordeaux family of grape varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Carmenere, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Franc, all of those uh, tend to have. And what do pyrazine smell like? They kind of smell like, you know, grass or maybe tarragon or they have a vegetal kind of green bell pepper component okay. to them, just kind of depending. They're, but again, it's not just one, it's, you know, it's not just one thing. Like there are different types of, of pyrazines and the one that people tend to get in, in Bordeaux family varieties is called like, it's called something isobutyl methoxy pyr pyrazine. Pyrazine, okay. Right? But there's this other pyr pyrazine. This is strange. Pyrazine is actually something that's, uh, and I got to thank John Williams for this. Pyrazine is something that is emitted by the plant as uh, uh, an insect repellent. Really? Right. So, so it, it's an expensive compound apparently for wow. the plant to produce. Like it little... requires a lot of energy. Oh, right. Wow. Right. So they just they use it to keep insects away during a really like yeah exactly it's like. Oh. <laughs> um, but uh, ironically, there's another type of pyrazine that is produced by ladybugs. Uh, really? and, and it smells awful, apparently, and people blame this pyrazine for ruining much of the 2004 uh, vintage in, in Burgundy, Burgundy because they said I heard that these about this. Asian ladybugs these got into darn the tanks, ladybugs. Right? Yeah, so it's the same thing. So apparently they were also trying to keep away. So we got insects. bug juice in the right. fermentation <laughs> taste. Right, yeah, totally. And it made the wine taste like butt. Totally, exactly. Okay. Right, uh, so, so pyrazine, this is this. Okay, is so that's one cup. Um, All right. Uh, uh, and, and pyrazine exists like all vines produce it, but for most vines, the amount that's left over uh, when you get to harvest is... It's just like... Yeah, it's like below our uh, threshold of perception, but for Cabernet or certainly Sauvignon Blanc, Carmenere, if you've had that from Chile, that's oh, yeah. that's definitely like, it's, it's it can be intense, right? Yeah, oh um, yeah. So Rotundone is another, uh, or Rotundone, Rotundone. Uh, okay. is another kind of famous one. Uh, that's the peppery component of like Syrah or some Gruner Veltliner oh, or really? a lot of Itali Northern Italian kind of red grapes like um, uh, Scapatino and things like that oh. have the same thing. Morved has this uh, oh, compound. Oh yeah, yeah, that black pepper note. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. you get it, you know, you get it in Rhone wines a lot, you get it in you know, uh, some northern Italian, uh, Pella Verga, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's yeah. a super peppery red wine, uh, super fun peppery red wine. Um, so other other kind of impact compounds. Um, what about white wines? So with white wines, uh, you know, monoterpenes are probably the big one. And I, I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about how like yeah. they develop this aromatic kind of component to attract birds. Those are monoterpenes. And it's the same stuff that flavors like the shampoo you use, you know, yeah. and the soap you use and, 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 and a lot of perfumes and things like that. They're the, these tremendously like floral or kind of fruity kind of compounds. You know, it's what gives a rose its smell or oh, what, you okay. know. So, so Gifford's Treminer or Viognier or Riesling or, you know, um, uh, Albarino or certainly Muscat grapes or all those kind of things have this, this monoterpene. It's so aromatic. Yeah, it yeah. is. And it's, it's funny, like, you know, those compounds exist before and after it, the, 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 the grape is turned into wine, which is kind of weird. Oh, that's interesting. Because so the grape actually still smells like yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so I notice, like, when I taste Sauvignon Blanc grapes, they're nothing like... Right, Sauvignon right. Blanc wine. Right, right, totally. And and so Sauvignon Blanc, you know, they have pyrazines, but they also have this another uh, uh, this other impact compound 
uh, which we used to call them mercaptans, now we call them thiols, uh, and they're basically this class of uh, sulfur compounds. And they are sort of exist in this kind of like locked you know, form in the grape, uh -huh. and then fermentation kind of unlocks Releases them. them. Right. Oh, interesting. And so when you smell like, when you talk about like cat pee or guava, or like um, yeah. those kind of notes, uh, you know, in Sauvignon Blanc or the black currant in Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. you know, things like uh, that that kind of grapefruit rind you get in Gewürztraminer. That to me oh, is yeah. always kind I of know like, what like Alsace. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So good. So so those are the, but those those are weird because they exist. You know, those aren't as much of an impact compound because that can be a lot of different grape varieties just I depending see. on kind of how they were grown. And then there are other things. You know, there that. Um, you, you know that are more winemaking driven like you know diacetyl you know you get that from butter, that butter kind of thing you get right, from, <laughs> right like just swim in it right from, uh, from malolactic uh, fermentation you get you know this thing called sodalon uh, from oxidation which sodalon. is sodalon yeah, I've never it, heard of that it's one. like um, it smells like cumin or maple syrup or walnuts oh I know this very well is yeah. that is that sort of I always associate that with um Mallard reaction is that yeah, sort yeah. Of associated uh, it, with it, it is, but it's like in wines you principally get it uh, from uh, oxidation. So wines like 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 you know Oloroso sherry or like Vangean from the Jura or even like really old you know Chardonnays or things like that. Yeah. Old old Sauterne uh, tends to have that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, there are you know so so this idea like these impact the the, the impact compounds that we understand right now they're really only a few, you know, and then there are all of these other like aromatic compounds in wine that are either Hundreds. less well understood or they form this kind of like base aroma of wine or, you know, and, and, and so that's, I think in the future, like getting into more of those and their, um, and how they influence each other, I think will be really interesting. So we're um, only just big getting to understand. Oh, oh totally, totally. Yeah. Aroma compounds. Yeah. It, it, it'd be an exciting time to um, go back to school, I guess. Yeah. Anybody interested? Microbiology. <laughs>